Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about image handling in Java. So we deal with images on a daily basis and you will often be required to deal with image handling in Java programs as well where you might need to read, read an image or write an image or load an image into memory and do other kind of manipulations on the images. So Java does provide support for image handling as well. And uh, you, you can pretty much load uh, any type of image, be it a GIF image or be it a PNG or be it a JPEG image. Basically, it converts into a Java 2D uh, image uh, to render it. Uh, and it basically creates a byte representation of the image to serve and save the contents. So in this section, we are going to talk about the image handling aspects of Java. And to do that, uh, there are broadly two classes which Java provides. As you can see in this uh, official documentation, the first one is java.awt.image class. And the second one is java.awt.image.bufferedImage image class, which extends the image class. So this is basically the super class, as you, as you can see here, which you can use to represent any kind of graphical image as a 2D array of pixels. And buffered image is a concrete implementation of the image class which you can use to construct instances of the class. And buffered image is, is sort of the, I would say the de facto standard or the go-to class whenever you are dealing with any kind of image rendering uh, tasks in a Java program. And we will also have a look at how we can use the buffered image class to basically read an, a sample image and also write a sample image to a file system. So you can read more about this in the documentation and uh, there's a, there are also a bunch of documentations available in terms of how you can read it, how you can load it into the program, how you can draw an image, how you can uh, create and save the image, etc. And like I mentioned, we will be covering some aspects of it in today's demo as well. So this was a very brief theoretical introduction about image handling. And like I always mention, if you want to know more about this, do check out the official documentation of, uh, of Java, where you can learn more about the image handling classes and utilities. So with that, let's move to the demonstration part. So I have prepared a demo here, which talks about image handling. So I have created a class called image handling demo, which has a public static void main method. And I'm just giving some, some sample uh, dimensions for the image in terms of width and height here. And then, as I mentioned that we will be using the buffered image class. So I'm creating an, a reference for the buffered image. It's currently assigned to null. So basically there's nothing. And then I am calling the method read from file. So like I mentioned, you can, you mostly will be dealing with reading from an image or writing to an image. So here we will look at both of the aspects as to how you can load an image from your file system into a Java program and then write it back to the file system from your Java program. So let's first look at the read from file method, which will tell us how we can read a Java file. So I provide some sample dimensions. These dimensions will vary based on your use case and I supply the buffered image object. Inside that I have created a try block and in the try block, the first thing you need to do for image handling is to basically create a file object because image is also technically just a file, right? So you provide the file image path here at this particular location. So Let's go to the sample image path. This is the destination path. And let me open the uh, sample image path as well, which is somewhere in the C drive. So this is the image which we are loading. This is the path which I've mentioned, which is C slash sample dot JPG. So let's first have a look at the image as well as to what this image contains. So this image is basically from a, from a cl clinical trial and, and uh, showing some blood sample or, or some vaccine bottles, which is pro probably the very uh, popular image nowadays uh, because we are living in this pandemic world. So this is the sample image which I've chosen to read and then I will load this into the Java program and then we'll try to write it back to the file system to a destination location. So this is where my image is present in the C drive named with sample.jpg. And this is what I've supplied here. So you just need to supply it in double quotes. Remember when you're dealing uh, with Windows file system, you always have to use double forward slashes, which is different if you're working with a, on a Mac machine or you're working on a Linux system where only this will work fine. So that's a bit awkward thing uh, which, which Windows has and you have to respect the operating systems uh, restrictions or way of doing things. So once you have loaded the file or uh, created the uh, sample.jpg file object, then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create an object of the buffered image. Remember, we just created a reference. We did not create an object yet of the buffered image class. 
and now is the time to do that so we supply the width we supply the height and then we supply the type of the image let's go to the constructor of this image to see what this image type means so this image type can be basically the type of the created image which comes from the color space so whether it's an rgb image or argb image or bgr image or uh, bite gray image there are multiple different types of images in the media space and whatever type of image you have you need to basically supply that image type in this particular argument so in my case it was an argb image so i supplied that particular if you click on this you will see that currently it's inside java an 8-bit rgba image basically has a static constant which is denoted by two you can read more about this inside the buffered image class documentation as, as well so once i've supplied that my buffered image object is ready which has all the details dimensions and the types of the image now the next thing is that you need to fill this image object with the file so you basically need to read the file and store the output of this read operation into the buffered image object then what will happen that along with this information whatever is present here will also be added to the same buffered image object so to read a, a image or simple a file java provides an io utility which is called image io and there is a read method available which is a static method on this particular class as you can see i'm calling the class dot method name here and then you supply the sample file name once you have done that then it will basically be reading the whole image into a 2d byte array and copying that over into this buffered image object once that is done if this particular line is successfully executed then you will get this message which will say reading complete and will try to print some hash code of the image object and after that if, if there's any exception in this block for example this particular line may raise an exception or this particular line may raise an exception if the file does not exist then you need to have the io exception caught remember io is a checked exception so if you are using these operations file new file and image io dot read you need to catch the io exception because it's a checked exception so either you need to catch it or you need to rethrow it these are the only two options you have with a checked exception so once we have done all of that if everything goes fine if everything is happy till line 35 then we just return the image object and our read from file operation will be done going back to the main method once the read operation is done the next thing i'm going to do is writing this image object to a new destination file so let's see what is happening in this write to file method because this is the method which is responsible for writing this image to a new destination location so i've created a public static void void method inside the same class where the public static void main method is present as you know that static methods can only call other static methods that's why this has this had to be static and i'm supplying the same image object which was returned from the read operation that goes in as the argument of this particular method and again I'm using a file object and this time I'm providing a destination location where I would like to write this image so this is the destination location I've chosen which is F drive Java tutorials folder and the image should be stored with the name out.jpg so this is the location there's already an out.jpg here so let me just remove it so that we can observe the output so we create the file object after that we again use the image io utility uh, we call our static method static utility method called write we supply the whole image object we supply the image type extension and we supply the output location again if i take you to the signature of this you take the rendered image you take the format name which is jpg and the output location so these are the three things which you need to supply once you call the write method on the image io utility class image io is a very handy class and do remember this class whenever you are dealing with uh, the image handling operations it will provide a lot of static convenience methods so we write this file uh, write this image object to a file to a destination location and if everything goes fine in these two lines we will get this message which will say writing complete if anything goes wrong we again catch the io exception and the exception will be printed here that's all is happening in this particular program where we are reading from file and we are writing to the file reading it from here and writing it on this particular location so let's run this program and see if we are able to read from file successfully and also write it to the specified location so run as java application it's a slightly memory heavy operation so it takes a bit of time because the whole image needs to be loaded into memory be very careful about that it might eat up your a large portion of your ram if the image is too heavy so here it says reading complete and then it prints the hash code details of this particular object and then it also executed the write to file method and it said writing complete so 
just to show you the reference back again, this is what we read, sample.jpg in C drive. And if I go to the F drive, Java tutorials, where I provided the output location, I do see an out.jpg here, which, which was not there earlier. And if I double click on this, it's exactly the same image. So Java was able to read the image and render the exact same image by converting the 2D byte array representation back to an image exactly the same form. There's no change in this image. So this was a very short and lightning tutorial for you to show you how you can use uh, image handling classes, for example, the image IO class and the buffered image class to do basic image handling operations. Obviously you can do more complex operations with it as well, but for the demonstration purpose, I've just kept it simple. And that's all I want to cover as part of this session. And in the next session, we are going to talk about the concurrency utilities in Java. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.